Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, April 12, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Orlando, Florida. Today, of course, Microsoft's Patch Tuesday and this Patch Tuesday quite a bit different than prior Patch Tuesdays. You may have noticed there was no table, no summary on our side in part because Microsoft went away with its traditional bulletin process. Instead, Microsoft fully switched to a new security update guide. You have to log in to access it. And even then, it may not always come up. If it does come up, then you should see 644 updates with 210 of them listed as critical. Lucky for Windows users, this update patches a vulnerability in Word that already has been pretty actively exploited these last few days by the Tridex malware campaign. This vulnerability, I mentioned it briefly on Monday, does allow an attacker to execute arbitrary code by tricking the victim into opening an RTF document. There are actually three different vulnerabilities that that are being used by this particular attack, one in Vert and Vertpad, one in Explore and one in Office. Probably of particular note is that Vertpad is affected too. So it's not just the full version of Vert, but also Vertpad. Particularly if you don't have Office installed, then you may deem yourself safe, but Vertpad comes as part of Windows, so you're still vulnerable. Also, for end users, no more individual patches, instead just one patch that bundles them all. So Microsoft kind of follows here in Apple's steps by releasing these large monolithic patches. For enterprise customers, there are still options to apply patches individually. And a couple other highlights from this month's patch set, in addition to the already mentioned Word in Explore Office patch, Hyper-V also has a couple of remote code execution vulnerabilities that are being addressed. Probably as severe as the Office flaw is a flaw in Outlook that can be triggered if you just preview a message. So by previewing a message in Outlook, you may actually trigger a remote code execution vulnerability. And of course, Microsoft Edge as well as Internet Explorer are receiving a large number of patches released today. These two browsers, as usual, are vulnerable to a number of remote code execution flaws. But Adobe, of course, also had updates for us. It fixed Adobe Flash Player, which also, of course, affects Windows with Internet Explorer and Edge. And Acrobat and the PDF Reader, two vulnerabilities in Photoshop and two in Creative Cloud desktop applications for Windows. Finally, one vulnerability in Adobe Campaign. And the recent large release of the remaining Shadow Broker exploits apparently did include some valid exploits. At least one has been described further now. It's an RPC exploit against Solaris. Now, Solaris RPC services have a long history of vulnerabilities. So typically, it's best practice to not expose them on the public internet. Of course, doesn't mean that administrator necessarily follow that advice. There's currently no definite list of vulnerable Solaris versions, but it's likely still affecting current fully patched systems. The RPC service being attacked here is XDR, which is the remote procedure call service that's commonly exposed to the network via RPC. And OWASP released Release Candidate 140 2017 edition of the OWASP Top 10. Now, given that the last edition was released 2013, there are, of course, some larger changes coming here. 
First of all, a number four in the 2013 version, which is insecure direct object references, and a number seven, which is missing function level access control, are now combined into a broken access control item. And we do have two new item, insufficient attack protection. Now, uh, when I saw this first, I thought about web application firewalls, and that's certainly part of it, uh, but the way it's worded, it's more generically that uh, your application should be able to detect attacks and protect itself. For example, I can see here checks for unusual user agents, brute forcing, and the like. Uh, very important here also that it should log attempts like this. A uh, web application firewall may certainly be one way to implement this. And then we have a second new uh, item here and that's under protected APIs. That of course has been a huge issue and I mentioned this at the RSA keynote earlier uh, this year. So APIs are more and more a part of web applications and of course often implemented as web services. The unvalidated redirects and forwards, which was number 10 in the 2013 version, has been dropped from this release candidate. Again, it's a release candidate, so changes may happen, but in particular, if uh, you are subject to compliance mandates or such that reference the OVASP top 10, then you probably wanna take a look and get ahead of this change. Well, uh, that's it for today, so thanks again for listening, and. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.